Hey, I'm Isabel. Welcome to my channel. Right now, I'm going to be talking about the books I read in September. So the first book I'm going to talk about is, of course, A Gathering of Shadows by Victoria Schwab. This is the second book in the A Darker Shade of Magic series, and I loved it. I gave it five stars. After I read it, I heard that people were not so into this book, and this is actually the least popular one, apparently, which is very shocking to me because I liked it more than the first book. The first book I gave four stars. I really enjoyed it. It gave me Tri Wizard Cup vibes. So the series is about alternate Londons. There's four different Londons that only a set amount of people can travel to, and these people are called the Antari or Antari. And our protagonist, Kel, is one of these people. He can travel between the Londons, and he mostly just carries messages from the royals in each London. So he's basically like a diplomat between the worlds. That was the story in part one. Part two carries on with his story, but it also includes the story of a character that he meets in the first book, Delilah Bard, a thief turned pirate, and there's the S and Tash, the elemental games that's happening in this book, and it's basically the Tie Wizard Cup. So in this book, we're introduced to two more countries, Faro and Vex, and they all come with a slew of their delegates, and they all battle for the cup, basically. And it's just really fun. And I know a lot of people didn't like the Tri Wizard tournament. What book is that called? The Goblet of Fire. For that reason, because they thought it was too fillery. And it didn't really um, progress the story much at all. But for me, I really like that one too. Because once I'm interested in a world, I want to know more about the magic and how it works. And it's just really good fun for me. And I felt the same about this book. The first book I felt wasn't as good because I think I was still getting used to the characters and how the magic works and how all the different linens work and all that stuff. But this time around, all the characters were like old friends for me and just seeing all the fun situations that arise out of the S and Tash was just really fun. That is it. So I gave this five stars. So keep it in mind if you're like me, you're interested in that kind of thing, you will enjoy it. If you're not like me, then it might just be kind of necessary filler for you until book three. The next books I'm going to talk about are the Turf Wars trilogy it's one story but they cut it up into three different stories um it's by the people that made avatar it's a continuation of the legend of korra series so i had previously read part one and two and part three just came out recently so of course i just reread part one and two and then three straight after because they're pretty short and they're really fun to read so if you're a fan of the avatar slash korra series definitely watch this it's basically the show in comic book format. It's really great. As someone who has withdrawal anxiety from Avatar up to now, it's really, really nice. If you're not into Korra, I would say still give it a try because it gets better after a while. Like, nothing can compare to Avatar, but at this point, I'm really invested in these characters too, so. So in case you don't know, The Legend of Korra is a spin-off of the Avatar series. It's about... The new avatar called Korra, and in case you don't know about that world, it's a world where there's elemental magic, and there's one avatar who has all of the elements, because people usually have no magic at all, or they have mastery of one element. But the avatar has mastery of all of them, and they're basically tasked with uh, keeping the peace. So I gave this one five stars, super enjoyable. The title is Turf Wars, so I think that gives a lot away. It's about Republic City and one of its biggest problems, which is gang warfare. And the spirit world gets involved and it just becomes one huge mess that Korra has to deal with straight after she comes back from vacation. It's just super enjoyable. If you're a fan of the series, definitely recommend it. It has a really cool world, really cool art, and a super good story, a diverse cast. What more can you want, <laughs> basically? More cool art. Can I show you the spirit world? It's just super beautiful art and a really, really good story. After that, I picked up The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue as part of Books with Chloe's read-along. Um, but I actually didn't like it, so I DNF'd it. I think I only read maybe like 20 pages tops. It was just annoying me too much and I wasn't in the mood for it, so I just DNF'd it because life is short. I'd heard really good things about it, but the romance kind of creeped me out a little and then I just wasn't feeling it, so I DNF'd it. I did look up the book to see if other people felt the same way about the romance, but nobody else did, so it was just me. After that, I listened to The Collectors by Philip Pullman. It's exclusively 
on Audible. It's an audiobook read by Bill Nye. And I really, really like that. It was five stars again. It's just a short story set in the historic materials world. It's about a painting of Mrs. Coulter and a sculpture of her golden monkey, which is her demon. And it's just about the really strange goings on that happen around these two pieces of art. It's kind of creepy, actually. It's a cool, spooky read. I really liked it. And of course, I'm always happy to be back in the His Dark Materials universe. It's my favorite book slash series, so. The next book is Wings of the Dove. I actually put this one off because I just wasn't in the mood. But unlike The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, I feel like I would want to pick it up later on because it's not about the writing for me or the story. It was just the fact that I wasn't in the mood for a classic at the time. So I'm going to put that off till later, but it is an interesting story. And it's set in Venice, so that's one of my favorite places ever. And it concerns a love triangle and an ailing heiress, I think. I know I've watched the movie, which has Helena Bonham Carter in it, but it was a long time ago, so I can't really remember much. But yeah, I'm really in a fantasy mood right now, so I'm going to put that off until I'm in a classics mood. The book I read after is A Children of Blood and Bone and this was really exciting for me to read because I had heard so much about it. I heard that it was inspired by Avatar so I was so excited. Now that I think about it, I'm reading a lot of Avatar themed stuff because I actually, um, I saw in an interview online that A Gathering of Shadows was in fact inspired by Avatar and the Triwizard Tournament so same thing with this one. I think the author said that as well that she's inspired by Avatar. Although, unfortunately, the hype for this one was more to its detriment than anything because I think I overhyped it too much and it does have elemental magic and it does have kind of similar characters as the Avatar series, but I think that's where the comparison ends for me. I mean, I still liked it. I gave it four stars. The opening was really, really great and the ending was good too, but just the middle really sagged for me because I don't know because there were times when um, the characters would act in certain ways and I would just be like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I was frustrated with the characters a lot of the time, especially everyone. <laughs> but the ending was really cool. I like gasped loudly a couple times. So Children of Blood and Bone is set in Orisha and it's a land where there used to be magic but at one point this thing called the raid happened and all of the magic wielders were killed and magic was extinguished for good. So only the kids of the old magic wielders are left. However, they are still marked because their hair is white. So you definitely know who has the potential for magic and who doesn't because they will look different from you and those people are discriminated against. They're given the worst taxes, the worst jobs. People in power are basically just given free reign to abuse it because of the hatred of the magic wielders. So this book is about one of those people. She's a girl called Zelie and her mom was killed in the raid. The premise was still really interesting and I think it's part of a trilogy. So I will read the next couple of books because I am curious as to what happens next and it's a really cool world. Next I have Eliza and her monsters. This was another five star read. I had a pretty good reading month. Like everything was rated pretty highly. Although I DNF one thing but Whatever. I think it just goes to show that I know what I like. And I'm kind of getting better at gauging which books I'm going to like and which I won't. So I'm DNFing those books really quickly and just sticking to the ones I know will be four or five star reads. So that's pretty good for me. But yeah, anyway, this is about a girl in high school who's not having a really good time in high school. She has social anxiety. She has no friends. And she basically just spends the day sketching for her webcomic. And it's hugely popular to the point where she can live off the money she makes from the merch. That was really cool for me seeing the kind of artistic process of an artist slash writer and it also includes some of her drawings here and there and I always appreciate art. They're really like scattered between each chapter. They're really good. So it feels like you're reading the webcomic as well as seeing her process as well as seeing her personal life and it's just really cool. I love reading books about artist processes so that was really good for me. So yeah, the book's about her and how she's kind of lonely in her offline world and how she's this huge figure in her online world. But of course, things change when someone who's a fan of her work and actually writes fan fiction for her work shows up at her school. He doesn't know who she is or anything, but she knows who he is. And it's just really cool to see the online world and the offline world merge and all the chaos that happens after. And I just really, really love this book. I gave it a five stars because there were so many things I related to 
not just like her anxiety actually if anything her anxiety is probably the, the thing that I related to least because she has really extreme social anxiety and mine is quite different from hers so but I related to the angst I could like see young me agreeing with what she was saying um, not saying that what she did was right like she was always really grouchy to her parents and her siblings and stuff but I mean sometimes you're like that when you were young like you were angry for no reason and people just needed to leave you alone basically and of course when you're a teen they always want to know what's going on with you they always want to poke their nose into your business and that makes you even angrier so I just really related to that and I related to um like I said, the writing process, her creative life. The other main character in this book is a writer. So I related to a lot of what he was going through. And a lot of it was kind of like an echo of my former self because she is in high school and I've, I've graduated university. So I'm kind of past some of the issues that she goes through, but I still really liked reading about it. So for me, it was the same thrill as finding someone who had read the same thing so they kind of get what you went through while reading that book um, you're kind of on the same level so reading this book felt like that it was like finding a friend that had read the same thing and you could gush about it or you can sympathize with each other over the sad parts basically if you were a moody teenager that spent all your time on the internet or if you're a creative that spends all your time on the internet this could be interesting I had a lot of fun reading it and I really liked that there were pictures in there because it felt like multi multimedia does that work i don't know yeah i super super enjoyed that and this is a library copy but i'm buying a copy of this book because i really liked it one of my new favorites so that's it for the books that i finished in september i'm just going to talk about the books that i was reading in september but still haven't finished so of course i have my writing book i'm almost done okay not really <laughs> i'm halfway through it um no rush with this one i'm preparing for nanowrimo so it's going in kind of a self-help route because it is, I guess, it's not just about the craft of writing fiction. It's also about having a rewarding writing life, so I can kind of see why it's going that route, but I'm not into it. I am not a self-help person at all. I realized the other day that it's probably because I don't like being told what to do, and that's what self-help books do. So I've tried to read several in my lifetime where I'm like, oh, I need some help, and books always tend to help me out, but not the actual books that are meant to help you. So, I don't know. So yeah, I'm reading that and I'm also reading my grammar book, which I don't know where it is right now. I'm still reading Ariel by Sylvia Plath, which is a poetry book. I started Finn Family Moomin Troll, which is part two of the Moomin series. And I started A Conjuring of Light, which is part three of the Darker Shades of Magic series. Oh, this is the last one. I'm so excited, but I'm also really scared because I don't want it to end. That's why I've been reading other books in between because I don't want to get into a book hangover. And I feel like if I don't read it, then it's never going to end, you know, which is really dumb. But anyway. Oh, I forgot to mention this in my last wrap up, but I'm also reading Emma on ebook on my phone through Libby, which is a library app. And that's been really great because you know in those moments where you're like meeting up with people and you've run out of conversation topics for the time being so you're just like all on your phone but it's socially unacceptable to whip out your book. I found a solution. I'm so happy. So this way I can look like I'm mindlessly scrolling through Instagram but I'm actually reading Emma. Perfect. So yeah, I've been making my way through that slowly because I'm in no rush. So yeah, that's it for my September reading wrap up. I have more in-depth thoughts on these books in my vlogs. So I'll link those down below maybe. Watch those if you're interested and thanks for watching and I'll see you later.